Well, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another one of those special editions of our live stream, Let Us Reason. Uh, it is with great pleasure that we have today another uh, brother, an ex-Muslim from Somalia, who also made that journey to follow our Lord and Savior. And of course, if you were tuning in with us last week, you've listened to the amazing testimony of Sister Shania. And today we have the privilege of having uh, Pastor Shino, who is her husband, who will share also his own journey to Christ. So with that says, I want to welcome all of you who are tuning in right now. Thank you for uh, following us. Thank you for interacting with us. Thank you for even uh, sharing her testimony. And we pray that you will continue to share these amazing um, interviews because we want more and more of our Muslim friends to uh, have their eyes open, to realize that God is at work in all places all over the world, even in places like Somalia, and in my case, Saudi Arabia and other areas of the Middle East. With that says, I want to remind all of you, please, to pay attention to our moderators, to the rules. We welcome your comments. Be respectful, of course, especially of our guests. We encourage you to write questions specifically to our guests. We will make every effort to uh, you know, track each one of them if possible. If not, I promise you that our guests will also continue to interact with you after the show is over. With that says, uh, brother, i like to welcome you uh, to the show. Thank you so much for making time for us. Thank you, Brother Al-Fadi. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. What a privilege. You know, briefly, Brother, uh, remind uh, people about your type of ministry that you're involved in right now before you start sharing about your own journey. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, my, my, me and my wife, uh, we lead a uh, ministry called Somali Christian TV Ministry. Uh, we have a YouTube called Somali Christian TV. So we have a, you know, we the Lord has called us to, to reach to our Somali Muslims. So we are his workers and uh, we're reaching out to Somalis through, inter through social media. Amen. Amen. So last week we had really the honor of having Sister Shania with us and she shared her journey. And part of her journey interacted with you uh, Obviously, she did yeah. share that she became believer before yourself. But take us yourself back all the way to your early days. Uh, where were you born? How did you grow up? What yeah. was your understanding of Islam at that time? Yeah, uh, I'm from Somalia and born in Somalia in Mogadishu. I grew up in Mogadishu. Somalia is a Muslim country, Sunni country, Sunni Muslim country, 100% Sunni, nothing else. And uh, I grew up in Mogadishu. I studied from uh, Quranic school, uh, primary school, secondary school, and university in Somalia, in Mogadishu. So I grew up in Mogadishu, and uh, my family were, you know, as all Somalis, so they were Muslim, and they were so strict Muslims as well. And uh, in Somalia, when, when you are born, a family of so in Somali, they Take you, they, they take you to Quranic school in young age, from f five years, six years, seven years old. So you have to learn Quranic, Quranic, uh, you know, uh, verses by heart sometime. And mm -hmm. uh, I managed to, to, to learn the Quran by heart twice. And, uh, you know, as uh, Arabic is not our mother language, so you have to memorize and you, you will know it by heart without not knowing what it means. So it, it, it was very hard to, to memorize something you don't know. But it, it has to be, it is uh, one of the rules that uh, the whole family or the society have. So you have to, to, to learn Quran. So when you grow uh, and the time comes, you have to, to go to mosque and you have to pray, you have to fast. And I've been doing that wholeheartedly. I was following, you know, Islam from all my heart because there's nothing else that you can believe. It is only Islam and the society believes Islam and they're all Muslims. So yeah, it is part of uh, our lives as well. So we were we were so, you know, proud to be Muslims and we we used to call ourselves 100% Muslims and that is a wonderful thing, but we didn't know anything else about other religions. But what ironic is, uh, you know, we used to hate Christians and Jews because of Allah hates them. So we were installed, you know, or, you know, uh, blunted hatred and, uh, you know, uh, just uh, not loving them, hate them. That's what we grow up with. And uh, Islam, you have to, this is your ummah, you love them and you pray for them, nothing else. But when, when it comes to the other, 
when it comes to other nations or other religions, you have to curse them or you have to denounce them. So, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I remember, brother, I mean, Ramadan is over, but I remember I used to yeah. long to go to the uh, mosque in Mecca, the Grand Mosque in Mecca. Uh, yeah. Especially, we call it the Dua uh, Khatm al-Quran, the prayer of the conclusion of the recitation of the Quran, which is usually yeah. the 27th uh, night. And yeah. that day, brother, we all long to hear the Imam curse the Jews and the yeah. Christians and the infidels. And it's definitely coming from the scripture and from the teaching of the prophet. He wasn't inventing things like this. He was just reciting no. and repeating yeah. the things that we were taught. So I agree with you. So that, that's uh, normal. So you grow up with just the hating and, uh, you know, uh, cursing them. So it is part of your life. And when you have hatred and uh, you know bad things in your heart that makes you bad bad person as well so i grew up like that way and you know then the civil war started 1990s um and we were privileged to to leave the country because of the calamity of the civil war so we left the the country because of that civil war but before the civil war the country was very peaceful and okay there's no problems with you know the, the freedom of religion or something else and we used to go to, to the beaches playing football we used to go to the you know football arenas you, we used to go to the cinema we used to go to uh, you know uh, the theaters and all of that but you know when the civil war came everyone has to flee the country those who could flee the country so we were privileged to come to, to europe and uh, you know we came to, to sweden so me and my wife and uh, we got two kids there in Sweden. And uh, when we were in Sweden, we lived in an area which was just uh, dominated by Muslims, you know, majority were Somalis. So when you are new into a country, you know, that is uh, different from your culture, from your language, you feel safe being with your, um, uh, with your, uh, with people who are from, uh, from your country. So we were gathered in one area that called, you know, like a ghetto. And uh, we used to have a Quranic school, ma ma mosques and masjid, and uh, we were just uh, like a, a small Somali. And we, we were not integrated into the society. Instead, we were segregated from the society. Yeah. At that time, uh, you know, brother, uh, I mean, we know that uh, these days, at least, people are hearing names like Al-Shabaab. You know, for yeah. instance, and their influence over there. You hear of ISIS and yeah. uh, their direct or indirect. Al Qaeda also has involvement in there. But in your days, growing up, was there such a thing, you know, as groups like this that were trying to at least influence the young generation or maybe even interfere with the government? Or was it totally different? Uh, it was a bit different because the government we had that time, it was, you know, military government. And we, they, they called him a dictator because he was uh, governing the country for 20, 21, 22 years. And uh, some of uh, some of the clans or some of, uh, you know, political um, uh, fractions, they were not, uh, you know, content with him. So, but he was, he was socialist, you know, in, in, uh, in idea. So he was not, uh, he was not allowing Islam to interfere his uh, governing um, uh, way of, uh, of, uh, of the state. So he was he was so rigid and he was so strong to you know to 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 take hand of uh, these Islamic uh, fractures. So they were not they didn't have any power that time. But when the civil war came and the vacuum came, so a shabab came as well in power and they took the power and then you know the 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 real face of Islam appeared directly from Somalia. That's correct, you know. So, so then, what happened? You know, how how did your journey uh, unfold from that point, basically? So, as we left the country and came to Sweden, so we study, uh, we we started the life from from the beginning. So, me, uh, my wife, and I, we uh, we we went to school and studied the language, and uh, you know, we managed to go to to higher schools to to get you know educational uh, uh, skills, and uh, we started working both of us. And we, we, we were okay and we were doing well. Um, I was working in a school, Islamic school, by the way, and I was uh, training the, the youth. I was a youth um, uh, worker. So we, we managed to build our life from, from the scratch to, to be part of the society that we've been living into. So we studied the, the language, which was a very you know, hard language, Swedish language, but you, know, you, you don't have anything else about you. If you want to, 
to integrate to society, you have to learn the main language that people speak. So we studied and uh, yeah, we managed to have jobs. So we, we were working, both of us. And then, you know, my wife and I, we, we talked and uh, we planned, just planned to go to, to the UK, to move to the UK in, in a, just a period or short time and then come back to, 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 the, uh, to Sweden again. Because uh, several times we went abroad and uh, my wife, especially, she couldn't uh, uh, you know, communicate with other people. Like she didn't speak English. So she felt, you know, I have opportunity now to go to, to the UK to, to just study the language and come back because we were um, uh, uh, European citizens at that time. So we agreed that and we came to the UK 2005. When we came to, to, uh, to the UK 2005, I started having my uh, own business. I, I, I bought a car, uh, a car and I became a taxi driver. So Shania started going to my wife. Shania went to to school to to study to to learn some language, but she was a, a excellent nurse. She wanted to work in a in a hospitals or care homes, but because before that she has to study the language. So she went to to go to school. But before she went to school, even so, not knowing the language so well, she was communicating with her family, and uh, that is the time someone sent her. A video clip about uh, a beheading someone, uh, a beheading person in a video. And then she had dreams about Jesus and then she became a follower of Christ. And when she became a follower of Christ, I was the first person who started, you know, persecuting her. Persecution is not only killing someone or, you know, injuring someone. If you, you know, uh, saying you are not that person, or you, you know, denying the identity she is claiming to be. For example, if she says, I'm Christian, I say, no, you cannot be Christian. You are, you are Somali, you have to be Muslim. And, uh, you know, the first day she became follower of Christ, she was evangelizing me, the family, and, you know, everyone who comes in front of her. And she was so bold because she's seen uh, heaven and she's seen, you know, uh, hell as well. So she was feeling it will be your duty if someone goes you know, both, uh, either ways. So she was trying to tell people, this is the only way to Jesus. Uh, Jesus is the only way to, to heaven. So come to heaven with me and believe Jesus. So that is what she was preaching to people. And she told me and I said, no, you're crazy. And as you know, if someone, you know, a Muslim person becomes follower of Christ or Christian, as we all know, the repercussion is very severe because of if someone leaves Islam, you have to be punished. The worst case scenario, it is to be killed. So I, I didn't want that my wife to be killed or my children or to me, uh, you know, anything happens to us. So I was protecting her and I was trying to defend her and uh, trying to convince her in good way. But I was, you know, um, uh, in, in, in uh, heavy pressure from the whole society. Social pressure was so enormous because they were saying, you are not real Muslim. How can your wife be Christian while you are still Muslim? And they, they were saying, you know, you are a, a weak person or, you know, you couldn't do anything. So they were saying even uh, you cannot be Muslim if you are living with an uh, infidel because you are still, you are already living in sin. Because she cannot be your wife when she, you know, when she denounced Islam, she left Islam, she cannot be your wife. So you have to divorce her. So time being, my, uh, my wife uh, grew in her faith. You know, she, she studied uh, the, the Bible and she was reading every day. And uh, even that time she was connected with uh, other uh, apologetic people like David Wood and uh, Sam Shamoon and, uh, you know, other apologetics that she, she gained a lot of knowledge about what Islam was hiding from her. So she became strong in the one side and became stronger to the other side as well, that she, she was studying the Bible very well and she, she became another person. Her character was changed totally from, she was very a wonderful person, but now I could see the character was changed in better way, like forgiving ways. She, she, she was forgiving even me when I hate her and curse her and saying all things to her. She was saying, yeah, you, know, you don't know what you're doing to me, but I pray for you, something like that. So I could see, the fruit of spirit was, you know, building up in, in, in her, like, like good way. Even people who were hating her, like a family who were, you know, threatening her to kill, she was saying, I will pray for you, I love you, and something like that. So I could yeah. see the change, but I was denying, you know, I was in denial 
I couldn't see where this is coming from, but I was just seeing the society and the family and the, you know, the, the other people, what they're saying to me. And uh, I was Muslim. I want to I... ask a question, uh, yeah. Pastor, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, you know, really two, two important questions. Uh, first of all, um, I want to take you a little bit, a couple of steps back. Uh, yeah. You know, as I grow up, of course, in Saudi or in the Muslim world, I'm told that the West is Christian in general or Christians yeah. and Jews. Was yes. that your understanding, for instance, when you went to Sweden, that you are in a Christian community, technically speaking? Yes, I believe that everyone who is not Muslim, I believe that they were Christian. Nothing else. Okay. So even, did you even, see anything wrong yeah. with that? You know, did you see anything yeah. wrong going to... A, I mean, people ask me this all the time. So why did yeah. you go to the West if you really consider them to be your enemies, the enemies of Islam? Well, I tell them personally that Islam is superior to anything. And yeah. I go there as part of spreading about Islam. And I don't see any problem going to their land as a way of increasing the presence of Islam. Now, how did mm -hmm. you perceive it? Um, you know, uh, coming to Sweden, for example, the first time we came to Sweden, uh, we were received very well, but we were thinking they are lost and I have to tell them what I believe. They have to believe Muhammad that they come, they come to, to heaven. So we were feeling that they were lost and they, they don't believe, they, they don't believe the real God and they don't believe the prophet, which is the last prophet. So it was our duty by somehow to evangelize them as well. That's the way we were feeling that, uh, we came here to evangelize them because they are lost. Lord has taken us from Somalia to here that we evangelize them, that they will be saved as well. So that's yeah. my, yeah. So my, my second that. important question here, as you know, of course, Islam allows the man to marry a Christian or a Jew. Yeah. But what is so interesting, you said that the community was totally against your wife, that she's an infidel now, and therefore you have to leave her, which indeed, you know, the Quran does say you marry yeah. Christians and Jews. You do not marry idolaters. So mm -hmm. how did you process that? Did you know that the Quran actually allows you to marry a Christian? But was your understanding that she's really not a true Christian in a true sense? Yes, uh, it is different ways of uh, interpretation here. You know, when someone is born as Christian, this person is you are, uh, a Muslim person is allowed to marry this uh, uh, this person as, uh, uh, as his wife. But she is not. Christian, they say, she is uh, infidel, you know, she is uh, murtad, if you call so. So a murtad is, you know, the, behind the other person of Christian person. So she is not someone that you can be with as a Muslim person. So you have to be divorced and uh, Quran says so and uh, Hadith says so as well. Yeah, very good, very good. I just wanted to, uh, yeah. to make sure that we address those. Okay, brother, so now you said you've see, you're have you seeing the fruit of the Spirit in her life, the way you are being hostile towards her, but yet she's telling you she's praying for you. Yeah. How did that impact you? Uh, so uh, the impact did not come from there because I was denying all that. I wasn't seeing how she was growing, but I was sensing just a physical way. And, uh, you know, the pressure from the f uh, family was very enormous as well. So they were calling me all the time and they were saying, you have to do something. You know, the reason uh, I was justifying that I have to stay with her was because I, we've been living that time almost 13 years. And I loved my wife and I loved my children. So we both, uh, you know, uh, grew up in a broken family. We promised to each other that we will not let, you know, anything happen to our children that we went through. So, you know, so we had a promise and we loved each other. And now this came, Jesus came in here and the family is pressurizing me that I have to do something. So time being, it came to time that people have seen I'm not leaving here. They said, you cannot be real Muslim. And uh, they went for the family who are, they mostly live in Europe. Uh, they went to uh, the, the mosque and the imams and the scholars and they consulted with them. And they said, he has only two options. The, that's, uh, uh, the, one, the first option, which is so, you know, uh, soft is he has to take the children away from her and leave her alone because she cannot be his wife. The second one was uh, you have, he has to kill his wife. You have to kill her because you are the one who is close to her. If you want to be real Muslim, you have to kill her because uh, the, 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 the Hadith says so. If someone leaves Islam, someone has to kill. If you leave Islam, you have to be killed. So these two options were delivered to me by my wife's uh, mother. And she said, these two options are for you. And when I've seen that, I heard from, from, from the phone, 
I said, no, this cannot be. I couldn't swallow that, swallow that because it was so repulsive and so wicked options, you know, two bad options. I was thinking, how can I kill my beloved wife? How can I destroy my family? Is this what Allah wants me to do? That cannot be. So I was so shocked and I was so disheartened. Wow, you know? I, I, didn't want, I didn't want anything to do like this thing. So it was against my moral and ethic principles. You know, I couldn't do anything like this. And they were still saying, you know, this is what you know, the teaching of Islam is. So if you want to be a real Muslim, you have to, you have to implement either um, uh, options. And I try to, you know, to have some loopholes, you know, I try to, to study, to, to search something. So I went deeper into, into Quran and to Hadiths. My conclusion came to, I have to do either these uh, options, otherwise I cannot be Muslim. So when I came to conclusion, I, my, I, I made my decision after four years, after four years, when Shanae became first uh, Christian until now, but the most of time I, you know, during this time, really, I become more strong in, in, in my religion. I was showing that I am, you know, better than her. I can do all, uh, you know, the, the ritual things in better way. And I was showing her, you know, how good person in Islam I am. So I was reading my, my, my Quran and I was reading my hadith and all things. And it's particularly, um, you know, this issue of uh, killing my wife or taking away my children. So searching all things, I couldn't find anything else about you know, implement one of these uh, options, these wicked options, I would call. So then I came to the conclusion. I decided nothing to do with, you know, I have nothing to do with Islam. So I denounced wow, Islam and I said, I said, no, I, this is not my, you know, principles. I, I have nothing to do with it. Yeah. So you, you felt, I mean, uh, uh, again, I want to back up a little bit. Uh, did you feel like whatever you've been studying was being uh, an eye opener for you, or did you question maybe maybe what I'm reading is not really what it means? There has to be a different way of interpreting. It. In other words, you still consider yourself Muslim, but you're hoping for a different way to interpret it. Because that's you know that's how yeah. many people I ask, like myself, when we went through the doubt journey, we always want to find a different way to yeah. still stay Muslims, but you know obviously it becomes difficult and difficult to convince yourself of it. How did you yeah. feel? So uh, still, I, I was still Muslim that time, very strong Muslim, and I wanted to to see if I could have, you know, loophole, uh, loophole it's called, you know, uh, uh, you know, other other way around that I could justify that I can live with my wife without not killing her or not taking away the children. So that was my research, and uh, you know, deeply into that, I couldn't find anything else. But I have to do either one of these. So it it was. Yeah, I was just try, try, trying to have different interpretation. Go to other people or go to uh, to the studies. I came to same, you know, uh, same wall. I couldn't, you know, go through. So that's why I made my decision that I have nothing to do with Islam. All I stopped at that time. All rituals of Islam, and uh, you know, I would denounce it, Islam all the time, uh, all of it. Glory to God. So what yeah. happened then? You know, now yeah. now that you felt like you are. Yes. Uh, you know, religiousless, if you wish. What yeah. happened? No, I, I was still believing God. I never denied God, but I didn't know the, the way to go to God. So I was going to my room sometimes and just praying to him and asking that he leads me to his right path. And I knew one day he will lead me to his right path, either ways. So I was just uh, faithful to do so, you know, night time or even uh, evening time, or sometimes when I'm in my car praying, just uh, directed to him. But I wasn't doing anything, you know, uh, religious wise, like, uh, you know, praying uh, five times or, you know, washing your hands and your faces or fasting or something like that. So one evening when I when my daughter and my son thought, you know, I was still at work, they came to their father running and in a happy way. And they were shouting, Mama, can we go with you tomorrow to the church? Uh, when they see me, they were shocked. Because we, I knew only my wife were Christian that time. And I didn't know that they became followers of Christ behind my back. So I was shocked. When they see me, they were shocked as well. And I asked them, what are you saying? You are not Christian. You are Muslims. And uh, you, you will make your decisions when you grow up. And I was so angry. I was so, you know, sh uh, you know shaking. And, uh, you know, just uh, I wasn't myself. Because I felt, you know, I was betrayed uh, in some way here. 
So banging the, 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 the walls and banging the, the table, I was shouting. And in the midst of that, uh, it was very, very emotional. In the midst of that, my daughter, who was about eight, nine years old, stood forth and she said, Dad, you know, she was crying at that time. She said, uh, we love you, Dad. And I, I, you know, I threatened I will go tomorrow. I will leave you all. That's it. She was crying and my son was crying. My, my wife was crying. And she said, Dad, we love you. Please don't go. But we cannot deny Jesus. When she was saying so, my eyes were open. And I said, why not? She said, she quoted a verse from uh, uh, Matthew 10, 33. She said, Dad, Jesus says, if someone denies me in front of people, I will deny him in front of my heavenly father. This verse came sharply into my heart. And they, you know, stood in my, my you know, my, my, my way of thinking. Amazing. And I, I thought, I thought, this cannot be word of, you know, nine-year-old girl. This must be something else. And this gave me, you know, desire or, you know, just, uh, um, I have to read the Bible. I have to read this word she's saying. But before that, I sometimes I try to read the Bible uh, just for argument and uh, debate to my, with my wife. But it wasn't for her heartily. I was always just uh, trying to find, you know, something, something wrong from the Bible. But this time, you know, I got sense of, I have to read this. So I decided to read the Bible. And uh, coming up one day, I was sitting in my car. Sitting in my car uh, around 10 o'clock, I was a bit hungry. I wanted to eat my sandwich I had. And uh, in the glove box, you know, I had a sandwich. When I opened there, tried to take out my, my sandwich, I found a little Bible beside the, the sandwich. I was hungry though. And uh, um, instead of eating the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the sandwich, I took out the Bible. This Bible, Hallelujah. little Bible, this Bible Hallelujah. ended. It ended up there more than hundred times. My wife was take. I was taken out uh, the, uh, the evening time, night time when I come home. She she sneaks about and then she puts there and thinking or hoping he will read one day this Bible. Yeah, man and, will not yeah. live by bread alone, but by every word by. that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen to that. Yes, they were in the same place though. So I took the Bible out. When I took it out and, you know, before I opened I prayed. Simple prayer, just a short prayer. I said, if you are the Lord of this Bible today, show me something which can change my life. And then randomly I opened the Bible when I said, Amen. When I opened the Bible, I came to John chapter 8, verse 1 till 11. As you know, it is a history about a woman who was caught in adultery. And I knew similar history, you can find it in Islam. And I knew how that was ending. The woman who was caught in adultery in that side, she was stoned to death. I knew that. And I was thinking, this is an Abrahamic um, religion. Maybe they're the same. Okay, let me see what, the, what, what Jesus is doing here now. So as you all know, uh, who, uh, who are believers, when I read, the Bible, when I read these verses, uh, the Pharisees say, you know, this woman was caught in adultery. And the, the law of Moses say she must be stoned. What, what do you say here? What are you saying to her? And Jesus didn't say anything first. And then they, they joked about him. And uh, he, then he stood up and said, if any one of you have never sinned, let him throw the first stone to her. And he bent down. And then one after one, one after one they left because everyone has sinned. All of us, we have sinned. We are sinners and we need savior. So when, she, when Jesus stood up again, he saw only the, la the, the woman who was there, no one else. And he asked her, where are you accusers lady? And she said, none, Lord. And he said, I will not accuse you, go your way and sin no more. When he said so, my heart was melted with love because this ending is amazing ending. I could see love, forgiving, mercy, and grace in here. But the other side, I was, I, I've seen death, killing, hate, and all that. So I was, this is my comparison of Islam and Christianity. I came to that conclusion. Wow, here, Jesus is giving this lady life and forgiveness and mercy and grace. But the other one was killed. This is dead, and here is life. 
and I fell in love in Jesus. When I've seen that, and I said, who is this Jesus now? Who are you, Jesus? And then verse 20 and uh, verse 12 says, I am, Jesus says, I am the light of this world. If anyone comes to me, we'll never go into the dark, but we'll have the light of this world. Wow. I was so shocked to see that, but surprisingly happy because he answered my question. I am the light. When he says I'm the light and you, one of Allah's name is, is, is light, is Nur. And I said, he is claiming he is, he is God. How can this be? I wasn't convinced yet, but I am sensing this is something which has kept secret from me. And Jesus, you know, the, the normal Jesus, the human Jesus, or this, the, the uh, uh, you know, the, the servant Jesus or something. He was servant, but uh, they say he's prophet Jesus, just so, nothing else. He's a human being like us. But now he's saying, I am the light of this world. How can he be the light? And not only that, anyone who comes to me will not go to that, but he will have everlasting life. Uh, he will have the light of this world. That was showing me here, you have a Hidayah, what's called Hidayah. It is the right path. You know, when you're walking on a right path, you can see all things. And I've seen this is the way I was looking for. But I wasn't convinced yet. Then I came to the, a verse which, was, which changed my whole life. And this verse is verse 24. It says, Jesus says, you will die in your sin. If you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. And this verse, you know, it is a, a vision. And it's conversation between me and Jesus. Because it was like, you know, personal. He was saying, Shino, you will die in your sin. If you don't believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. Do you want to die in your sin? This first verse, uh, the, uh, the first part of the verse, it was so big and light. But I am was, you know, more than, more, more than bigger than this. And it was jumping up and down. I am, I am, I am. I could sense I am is more significant than all things else. Anyways, I was so heavy loaded. I could feel heavy loaded. All my sins like were on my shoulders. And I was feeling that I needed some help. And Jesus, the, the, you know, he was saying, do you want to die in your sin? Do you want to die in your sin? I was saying to myself, if you die in your sin, you will go to hell. But what you need here, you need someone to help you. And he was saying, if you believe that I am, you have to believe that I am, I am, I am. So I can be your help, you can save, I can be your savior, just to believe. Mark said, I felt when he says that I am he, I was referring to he that I found in verse 12, that he is the light, he is God. Then this heavy loaded was so you know, heavy and I wanted you know, someone to take away this heavy loaded from me. It was all my sin was on me. So I came to conclusion, I said, yes, you can be my Lord and Savior and save me. As soon as I said so, the heavy load went out. I became very light, happy, joyful. And I said, wow, this is, this is very, very good. And I surrounded myself to him and I said, you will be my Lord and Savior. As soon as I said so, I took my car, drove back home and knocked the door, Shania opened. And when she see me, I was so happy. And she said, what happened to you, Shana? And I said, I found Jesus in the Bible. I am his follower now. He is my Lord and Savior. She was so happy. You cannot imagine, you know. The, she says always, that's my, my, my happiest day ever. And we hugged each other. And she read Salvation Prayer with me. We became both followers of Christ. And we reunited with Jesus. That's amazing, brother. Praise the Lord for that. It's obviously, um, you know, a journey that was filled with challenges for you. And I can understand yeah. the honor and shame side of things. And being a man, of course, in a community like ours, which is chauvinistic, usually puts a lot of emphasis on the men and his uh, leadership. To be attacked, of course, to be called a weak person must have been so difficult. But praise the Lord for you're uh, basically, uh, uh, you know, heeding to the voice of God, the Holy Spirit, being convicted in your heart, going to search what Islam teaches, yeah. and then realizing, you know what, this isn't, the, uh, these are not the principles that I want to follow. And uh, in other words, your, your own moral character was higher uh, than that which you were 
exploring. So praise the Lord for that. Now, let, let me say uh, this, you know, um, was there any, right after you accepted Christ, was there any fatwas? Was there any harassment? Was there any attacks against you from the community at large immediately, I should say, whether friends, family, or others? Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Brother Al-Fadi. You know, when we both became followers of Christ, uh, it, it was a wonderful thing. It was an amazing thing for us. And uh, people know before me, before I became a follower of Christ, that Shania was Christian already. And I knew what she went through. And uh, in this case, for me, it was a calculated risk because I knew what will happen to me as well. But this time, as a family. So when we became followers of Christ, we didn't stop there. I told you before, uh, Shania was evangelist a fair day. And when I came to, to know Jesus, about four years, she became more evangelist and was or, or already, already reaching people. So I joined with her. And, uh, you know, one of her prayers, uh, she always tell this to, to other people. She said, uh, you know, uh, I was asking uh, brothers and sisters that they pray for my husband. And when he becomes, not only that he becomes full of Christ, but he will serve the Lord with me. So that is the answer the Lord answered. So we become followers of Christ both, and then we join together with our ministry. As you know, leaving Islam, it has consequences. Already persecution is there. But when you reach out to them, it is more danger to that. You know, it is a danger above danger. So they say, you know, this person is spreading evil into society. Evil, I would call them um, fitna into society. So you are doing something bad. So when, when uh, 2015, when we became out first as, uh, you know, Somali Christians and the 12 of us, uh, you know, announced that we are Somalis and we are followers of Christ, uh, the imams in Somalia, they sat down and made fatwa. And they said, if someone sees these people, they must be killed. Or you have to gather the information and tell, uh, tell us, we will take care of them. So the family were, you know, harassing us. They denounced us. The, uh, you know, the government or, you know, the imams and the scholars, they issue, uh, issue with the fatwa, the life became more, more danger. So everyone who, at that time, people were, you know, very harsh to us. They were trying to, you know, sometimes sending uh, threatening words. If we see you, we kill you. Knives, guns, you know, sometimes shot head, you know, they, they put into your uh, inbox, all kinds. So it was, it was very, very difficult. Yeah. So let me, let me, I'm going to put a question right now, or at least a comment by someone by the name Jameer Muhammad Ishmael. He keeps making comments, you okay. know, and I've been tracking that, uh, you know, the idea of killing our apostate is not a teaching of the Quran. Uh, the idea of killing your wife, as uh, the community is telling you, that's not a teaching of the Quran. The idea that you just mentioned, the fatwa by the imam, what he's basically saying, what you can insinuate Im uh, Im implicitly from what uh, the comment says, is yeah. that the imam also doesn't follow Islam. So I'm going to put the, one of his comments right here. You can see uh, he's saying, therefore, the killing of his wife is completely against the Quran. Now, let me ask you this, uh, you know, Pastor Shino. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you for one second doubt that this is the teaching of Islam as a full package, Quran? And hadith when you were told that your wife is an apostate and now you have to take action against it did you for one second before you did your research doubt that what the authorities are telling you was false no i i, I didn't doubt at all because uh, what i've learned was you know islam is combined the teaching of quran and hadith what the hadith says is strong like as uh, you know the quran says if this person says you know it wasn't it wasn't right teaching that he he is he has to deny the hadith of Muhammad. If he denies the hadith of Muhammad, he has to deny he has to deny Muhammad, because they say his words are not only his words. Wama yandqo an al hawa it says in huwa illa wahi yuha. So what he said was he can he is not just talking about you know uh, from from himself. He talks what the Lord has uh, the the what Allah has uh, you know told him to say. So if he said man bedal dinu faqtuluhu if he said. Uh, if someone leaves Islam, it must be killed. If you deny that, you have to deny Muhammad. And you exactly. have to deny and you know, Islam at all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sharing in the screen one of many hadith and teachings by the Prophet of Islam. Here's what he's saying in Sahih Bukhari. You can find in Sahih Muslim. You know, we're talking yeah. Sahih here. 
And yes. he says, you know, basically the blood of a Muslim who confesses that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and that I am his apostle, meaning who confessed the Shahada, yeah. cannot be shed except in three cases. The last yes. case he mentioned out of the three is the one who reverts from yes. Islam, become an apostate yes. and leaves the Muslim. Right. So I guess, I guess Jamir is saying that the prophet of Islam is a liar. Maybe that's what he's saying. I don't know. Yeah, it's up to him now. It is the question is uh, on his side. If he denies this uh, this hadith, he has to deny the the teachings of Muhammad. If you deny Muhammad's teaching, you have to be a kafir. You have to be you, are, you have to denounce Islam. And we ask you to come to Jesus and uh, to be saved. You cannot save yourself. So yeah, you are welcome. Yeah. Jesus is for everyone, and He loves you. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, here is I'm gonna uh, now I'm gonna address a comment uh, by a friend of ours, uh, uh, John Beatty. Uh, John Beatty yeah. is saying yeah. that uh, what what Jamir is saying, he doesn't acknowledge the Hadith. Now you know there is a movement called the Quran only, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if if that's where Jamir is coming from, then I would like to ask Jamir to tell me how does he learn to pray five times a day? How will he learn about the rituals when he goes and perform Umrah or Hajj? Yes. Yeah, I need to understand where exactly is he going to get his uh, his source uh, of information from. So uh, uh, we'll wait for you to answer, Jamir. Go ahead, brother. So what did, what happened right after? Of course, you accepted Christ. How did your ministry now uh, become a, a a way of life for you? Oh yes. Um, uh, when I became follower of Christ, and my wife uh, were already evangelizing, so we joined to each other, and uh, the Lord has given us passion and uh, desire to reach out to our people. So the way we've seen was, you know, we have to do something. And uh, the Lord has put into our way, social media is a wonderful tool and a wonderful way to reach not only one group in geographic way, but in a brighter way. So we decided to have a, a ministry, Somali media ministry, which is uh, uh, on social media. So we started to, to build up that with the help of the Lord and uh, with the help of other uh, organizations and uh, and uh, the church so people have to help, help each other that we build this ministry that we reach out to our somali speakers and somali somali muslims who are about 20 million somali speakers so that's what we build up and uh, developed and uh, now uh, by grace of god we we reach in uh, you know uh, bigger audience and uh, the lord has helped us to to have you know, the YouTube, now YouTube stream is we're doing and uh, we make videos, other videos in the studios and we have a, a TV a broadcasting from Ethiopia, which is called Al Shaddai TV from last year that, uh, you know, reached to all uh, Horn of Africa, Somalia, Ethiopia, Kenya. So people are watching our videos there, our program is there and many, you know, are commenting from there and many are getting saved from there as well. And our live stream is very popular nowadays and the people are, connect, are connected with us you know, calling us and uh, they're following us. And some of them are saying, you are our voice. Please speak. How are you speaking? Why didn't you come out for a long time ago? We need you. And the uh, people are so oppressed and they need savior and they need freedom. So that's what we're doing. And, uh, you know, by, by grace of God, we started uh, dubbing some of your videos like, you know, Trinity. People are more, you know, confused about Trinity. And how you explain Trinity is a wonderful way. So we dubbed that and it was received in a wonderful way. And we are dubbing as well. And um, well, our brother David Wood is uh, teaching as well, which are so welcomed into so, so Somali Christians and Somali, you know, seekers. So this is what we're doing. And uh, the videos we're producing is sometimes comparing uh, Christianity and Islam and, uh, you know, topics, which is very important for, for Somalis. And we see many, many lives being saved. And Somalis are hunger for the truth. And if we don't tell them, who will tell them? And it says in the Bible, you know, um, uh, faith comes by hearing, the hearing the word of Jesus. If they don't hear, how can they believe? So we are the voice and we are reaching out to our people. And when they see their, you know, indigenous people, you know, speaking their own language, are preaching the good news, they feel connected with us. And this is a wonderful way that we feel we are connected as well. And, you know, when people call and want to know more about Jesus and some of them call in and they say, we, we need to receive Jesus, that is our joy. And we know that the, the Lord is pleased with that as well. So that's the ministry, what we're doing. And uh, we start we started, um, uh, last week we started an um, uh, uh, English live stream as well, as we promised. Uh, my wife, when, we were, when she was with you here, she said, we will start. And we started last week 
and it was a wonderful time we had and we thank you you know you are you are your followers your subscribers they came to us even not only that english uh, live stream they used to be with us when we were speaking somali they were so faithful to the kingdom and to the lord that they were they were there and just praying for us and encouraging us and saying we, we praying for you that's amazing you have amazing followers and amazing subscribers yeah and I want to just uh, make a, a, a quick praise, of course, for this. Uh, praise the Lord, of course, for your ministry. Simply the reason why you call yourself Somali Christian TV, because there are no Christians in Somalia right. in the first place. I yeah. mean, so uh, it's not like you are uh, reaching out to the Christians in Somalia who happen to be uh, born Christians. No, I'm sure there are Christians in Somalia who have followed the Lord. No doubt about yeah. that. But we praise the Lord, of course, for your courage, for the type of ministry you're doing. And I'm thankful that you're doing things in English because we want more and more English speaking people, yes, like, yeah. for instance, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, who reach out yeah. to the Somalis to learn from your own cultural experience, from your own background, to be more effective in reaching our Somali, uh, you know, uh, communities and friends and neighbors and hopefully soon brothers and sisters in the Lord. Now, just for uh, the benefit of those who are watching, your channel called uh, Somali Christian TV, but yes. uh, is it really on TV, on cable TV, or is it only on YouTube and social media? Uh, it is uh, so far. It's on YouTube and social media, but we have uh, the uh, in 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 in, uh, in Ethiopia they have a, a satellite TV where our videos are you know broadcasted from there. But what we do here at Somal Christian TV, it is uh, uh, it is on YouTube and uh, on social media so far. But we're hoping that will be in the, in the cable uh, in the future. Very good. I just want to make a quick comment to our friend uh, Jumeir, who is uh, in a state of delusion right now. He still yeah. denies that the Hadith has anything to do with the teaching. So, Jumeir, I'm going to tell it to you in Arabic. The Quran says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Yes. Whatever the prophet gives you, you have to apply it. Whatever he prohibited you from doing, you have to stop from doing. Are yes. you telling me that verse in the Quran is also fabricated verse? Okay, brother. So uh, how is your ministry done? Is it just you do live streams and you share things? Or are you physically also involved among the Somali communities? And in what capacity? Yes, uh, that's a good question, uh, my brother. Um you know, this is uh, the basic of the ministry. So we produce videos and uh, we broadcast them and uh, we answer questions and we follow up, all of that kind. But uh, there are some Somali uh, fellowships, you know, uh, small fellowships in Europe and in Africa. Like uh, in Sweden, we have a big fellowship in, uh, in, in Norway, in Finland, in uh, Netherlands, in Germany. So this, uh, we oversee all this and we go to them sometimes and we preach and we teach. So, and uh, we baptized them as well. Last year, uh, December last year, we went to Uganda and we baptized 20 of uh, the followers who became followers of Christ through our ministry. And we went to Ethiopia as well to teach and train people. So uh, yeah, we, we do other stuff as well that uh, uh, that is a part of uh, our, our ministry. So we train, we teach, we disciple, and we encourage people, we pray with them. We are what we call um, a church without walls. So no wall can combine us. So no, no con uh, container. So we are open and uh, yeah, we go everywhere and uh, we do what the Lord has called us to do. Wonderful, brother. Um, how can people, of course, follow you? Uh, just for for the sake of those who weren't listening or watching last week, for instance, uh, which channel on YouTube they can go and track with? One more time for the benefit of people. Uh, yeah. How can they support you on your ministry? That's important also. We want to know how yeah. people can give to, to your ministry. So our uh, YouTube channel is called Somali Christian TV. And every Saturday, we plan to have an English live stream. So if one if someone wants to come to, to be part of that uh, uh, live stream, you are welcome. And we love to have you there. And, uh, you know, to support us, we love you that you support us uh, through PayPal or uh, Patreon uh yeah the lord is doing amazing thing you pray for us is a big help as well pray for us and pray for somali tv and pray for our uh, brother alfadi and pray for uh, the other um you know uh, um, uh, evangelicals uh, i call what's called um uh, those who preach the good news to other people apologetics i mean so you have to pray for them as well they are in front line and they doing the work of god so so wholeheartedly please pray for them as well 
Thank you, brother. Thank you. We still have uh, uh, time, about 10 minutes or so. Uh, you mentioned to me also that you've been taking some of the videos that, uh, you know, by the grace of God, we've been able to produce, whether myself or David Wood and hopefully others. Uh, can you tell people more about what you're doing with these videos as well? So uh, these videos, we, we selected the videos we, we believe they will be helpful for our ministry and for our people and uh, for the kingdom of God as well. Pilar, because we know the question is uh, uh, Somalis or Muslims are asking, like the Trinity, the, the, the series you've done and still doing it. So when we dubbed the first video, it was well, well received because people were so confused about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, because they've been taught, you know, the Father, but the Mother, uh, the son, or sometimes Gabriel, sometimes there, sometimes that. So they were confused. But the way you, you know, uh, put up all things together, it was wonderful. So that's what the, what, the, what people need to know. It's a simple way. So that's one. The other uh, video with Dublin is like uh, David Wood's video, which is uh, comparing Islam and Christianity. And, uh, you know, where Islam taking out, uh, you know, uh, the scriptures from nowhere and trying to use it in uh, on, for their own gain. Like the, the comforter is uh, Muhammad. So when this comforter was explained in good way, they understand that the comforter is not Muhammad. The comforter is the Holy Spirit in the scriptures. So this is very helpful and very, very beneficial for uh, our ministry and for our people and those who are seekers who don't speak other language but speak Somali only. So your voices, which is English, if you adapt to Somali language, people, you know, know this is speaking Somali and uh, explain in a good way, you know, uh, what the topic is saying. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we're gonna revert again to making some comments. Uh, we have another uh, uh, interesting uh, person by the name of Sha'ar Sufi. Sha'ar is in denial that the word Salafi has anything to do with Islam. Sha'ar, do you have any idea what the word Salaf even means? Your prophet says that the best generations, and I'm gonna read the hadith for you in English, the best people are those of my generation then those who came after them, then those who came after them, then there will come people after them whose testimony precedes their oath and their oath precedes their testimony. I guess he's talking about you right now because he says that the first three generations, his generation and the tabi'i, a sahaba or tabi'in are the best of generations. That's where we yeah. get the word salaf going back to the seventh century Islam. But what you're saying, Sha'ir, is that you know better than your prophet. So I guess this... Pro even though I don't believe the hadith is uh, inspired by anybody, I guess this time I'm going to say this hadith has been fulfilled in your action because you're denying your own prophet. Why don't you, Sha'ar, you and Jumeir, start a new religion, call it whatever you want, and have followers and declare yourself to be prophets and tell us who the God that you're worshiping because it seemed to me, folks, you're not following your God. But I'm thankful. I'm thankful that you are expressing publicly your dissatisfaction with Islam. So come to Jesus is the Amen. answer is yeah. the only answer for that dilemma. So with that, it says, uh, brother, uh, are you seeing any fruit from Somalia or even from among the Muslim communities here in Act With, people coming to Christ? Oh, yes, uh, in big way. These days are, you know, the, the harvest day for Somalis. And we see every day we see Somali, one Somali or two or three coming to, to know the Lord. So it is very fruitful. Uh, people, we know that, and we read the salvation prayer with them uh, more than 4,000 now, about 5,000. So Somalis are knowing Jesus. And what I believe is if the majority of Somalis become followers of Christ, we will get our country back. We will, our country will be peaceful. Our country will be a wonderful country, and we will come to know each other and loving each other and we flourish and you know knowing Jesus is wonderful so that is what we are looking for one day that Somalis will know Jesus fully Amen Amen my brother uh, tell us a little bit more about some of your future projects in ministry uh, the stuff that you feel like you can share of course I don't want you to share secrets yeah. with us but uh, what are your plans for the ministry itself so uh, we would love to have a uh, you know uh, bigger studio that we can produce you know more videos uh, that we can you know invite people into the into the studio and uh, as we mentioned the cable you know and satellite likes like uh, you know uh, tv which is a 24 hours uh, video that people can watch a satellite video so we we we're planning to do to do some more by the help of the lord and we still you know 
uh, following his uh, his Holy Spirit, and the Lord will will give us, uh, you know, uh, the future um, plans uh, after this, or even uh, to uh, to complement this. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. Um, any final thoughts? Any final prayer request? Uh, any final words of encouragement you want to share with uh, the viewers? And uh, for those who will end up also watching this uh, later on. Yeah, uh, I, I will say first, uh, those who are watching us and not yet a uh, follower of Christ, I will say Jesus is the Lamb of God. He is the, uh, you know, the atoning sacrifice for all mankind. Jo uh, first John chapter uh, 1 verse 2 says, he is our atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for our sins, but for the sins of the whole world. That is how our Father in heaven is so generous. He provided all things. What you need is to accept Jesus, just to believe in him. Everyone who believes this, you know, atoning sacrifice, Jesus Christ, the only begotten son, you, uh, you will never perish, but you will have everlasting life. That's what we need. This is the promise we have in Jesus, you know, everlasting life. When I was still Muslim, I didn't know where I'm going. But when I'm flow of Christ now, I know the way. I know this is the right path because he promised that everyone who believes in me will never perish, but will have everlasting life. So if you want to have everlasting life, you cannot work for it. You cannot earn for it. It's a gift of God. As it says in the Bible, uh, you've been saved by grace through faith, not uh, by, by work, but it's the gift of God. So this, this gift is Jesus Christ. Receive this gift and you will be saved. Uh, the other, uh, uh, our people who are here, who are followers of Christ, I will say, wonderfully, we, we have to finish the race, you know, in a in faithful, faithful way. I, I just want to share a, a short um, uh, history in my life. Before I became a fellow of Christ, when my wife, you know, talking to me and telling me always, Jesus is that and Jesus is this, I was so jealous sometimes. I thought she married another person. She was passionate about Jesus. And I said one day, I hate this Jesus when I was still Christ, uh, Islam, Muslim. I hate Jesus because he destroyed my family. And, you know, saying so, when I became a follower of Christ, reading the Bible, I came one time into John chapter 10, verse 10, the way the Lord says, the thief has come to, to kill, to destroy, and to steal. When I read that, Jesus said, do you remember, you know, one time you hated me, you hated me most, you thought that I was your enemy, the enemy is here. The enemy was your family who wanted to kill your wife, to destroy your family, to steal your joy but I came to give you life, life in full. Now, you see here, I have life in full with Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is with you and he has promised you to give you life, life more abundantly. We are in this world, we may face difficulties sometimes, but he overcome the world. Uh, he overcome all uh, kind of uh, tribulation and uh, difficulties. He loves you and he wants you to give you life, life more abundantly. What he wants to see is just, just that you trust him, trust in the Lord. All things will be wonderful for you. Thank you. Amen, brother. Amen. Thank you so much, of course, uh, for uh, the privilege that you have given us, you and your wife, and uh, to uh, come here to share your journey. There is a lot of people who will be encouraged by it, and we pray that many will come to know the Lord through your amazing ministry, especially, of course, from Somalia. Uh, we love you, uh, uh, love the Somali people. We love all of our Muslim friends and uh, Muslim people. We're not here because uh, talking about this because we hate Muslims. We do not hate no. Muslims. We love them. They're all made in the image of God, like all of us. And God commanded us to love our neighbor as Amen. ourselves. As so yes. we are not here to uh, say anything negative about you. But we tell you, do we hate the teaching of Islam? Absolutely we do. Because... It is the same teaching that brought my brother to Christ because we, he discovered that the teaching has different moral compass than what his own heart and his own conscience telling him. Yes. In this case, to go and harm his own wife, his partner in life, that's when he realized that that cannot be the true God who tells me to go and harm someone he created, he yeah. made in his image. 
So I'm thankful that the Lord has been patient with you, that he opened your eyes to the truth. We're really uh, thankful for the courage of your wife, who was still a babe in Christ, yet has the courage to share the truth with you. I pray that all of those who are babe in Christ will be encouraged by stories like this. And indeed, she's a testimony to what the Bible says, that we do not have the spirit of timidity, but we have the spirit of power. Our Lord didn't give us a spirit to be mediocre. He gave us the spirit that will enable you to stand and give testimony about him before kings, before authorities, before governors, and before anyone. So I am so thankful for your ministry, brother. Hopefully this is not going to be the final thing we'll be doing. We will continue to collaborate. In fact, next time I'd like to yes, invite you yeah. and your wife to come here as a panel discussion and we will be, uh, continue to talk about, you know, things related to ministry to Muslims. And hopefully, uh, uh, you know, let us know how we can help in your English, uh, you know, speaking channel. Now we want to know how we can help ourselves or others to uh, basically partner with you, my brother. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for everything you do. Thank you, everyone, for uh, watching us. Uh, we pray that you will find this show to be helpful. By the way, this is just part of a, a new Kind of like a playlist that we'll develop. We're gonna call it uh, "From Islam, From Islam to the Great I Am." So it's basically yes, a series yes. of testimonies of ex-Muslims yes. who found our Lord Jesus Christ, and I tell you that there is a lot of them in the lineup, and we will release, uh, we'll bring them basically in due time. Tomorrow we have a special guest that we will talk about. How how did we get the Bible that we have in our hand today? from the apostles in other words did the apostles write what really happened and what jesus said so uh stay tuned to that tomorrow at 6 p.m new york times which is 11 p.m uk time brother thank you and thank you uh, brother thank you, you here god bless god bless everyone this is al-fadi over and out take care